Um, I do feel like some of you guys may want to go in heavy on the journaling at this time. And mind you, we're under a full moon. Um, we're in Pisces season. I'm just getting like a heavy reflective energy and, you know, along amongst other energies going on. I'm sure um, that plays a role. But journaling seems to be something that I feel, um, you know, whether it's journaling your thoughts, whether it's your feelings, whether it's your dreams, whether it's your goals, your intentions, whatever it is that you wish to release, whatever you feel like to journal, it could be all of those things and more. Um, I'm just getting a strong energy around that, okay? Take your time. Rest. Um, yeah, rest, ground your energy, resting could just, laying off of your feet, doesn't necessarily have to be sleeping, but if you feel the need to sleep, if your body's telling you, hey, like, we, we have to get our rest in, then definitely take heed to that, okay? All right. I've just seen a vision of a woman walking down a hallway and opening a door and it's like it led to another like long pathway or hallway and she taps a little girl on her shoulder I feel like that's inner child you're uncovering something or could be the inner child doesn't have to be like the heavy stuff doesn't have to be the wounding it could just be getting in touch with that little you okay you have Cairo's time that wanted to come out whoa Card is speaking, soul ties. Come out. What is this? Vibrational alignment. Childhood trauma with the orphan spirit and the Judas. Let's get real for a second. <laughs> we we don't have to get real with this, okay? Kairos time just means a divine opportune window or time, okay? Soul ties. Vibrational alignment with my baby <laughs> from the avatar, Aang, the orphan spirit with childhood trauma, and the Judas. There's so much to unpack and uncover with this message, so I'm going to take my time. I get a feeling that that vision that I just saw was the opportune time, that window of opportunity, that door of opportunity that is in front of you that you're about to step into and I feel like you're going to meet some of your your fears you are gonna you know like I said it doesn't have to be trauma but in this case I do feel like it is certain things certain wounds if you're not familiar with the orphan spirit you can look into that and what that means might be something that you carry that causes you to you know feel separated from people you don't quite feel like you fit in or you don't feel like you're good enough sometimes or you feel like you know you got to be your own boss and in a sense that's a little bit irrational at times and maybe a little bit stubborn and unwavering okay um you could be a little crash some like crass sometimes with your energy like people might take you to be as an insensitive being like you just don't understand but i feel like because you've had to be your own comfort and your own soldier for so long or maybe you were the only child or for some of you, you were the eldest child or you felt like you never really had anyone understood you could definitely be a middle child as well or just kind of in the middle of amongst a lot of other children where you didn't feel like you had that total focus at times or where you didn't have that refuge to really feel vulnerable um, and safe that you could unpack so you dealt with it a lot on your own so it's kind of like People could be like, dang, why don't you're just so insensitive? Like, it, why are you so harsh about things? And it's like, you know, well, I've gone through harsh things and I've dealt with it type of thing. And there's a lot of things to unpack for some of you it could be different. But that little girl being tapped on the shoulder is someone's inner child. You have to meet and face this part of your inner child before you step into the new. And Spirit says it's part of the reason why, you know, you're tethered to a part of yourself, but... 
I also picked up from this that you have connections to people that you need to sever. And because of that orphan spirit, it makes it very hard for you to do that. You have people around you that may not have your best intentions. People that you love that don't really love you back. Or I know that sounds harsh. But I, I mean, I have to just say what I'm getting. Like people that really said that they loved you or showed you that they would be there for you. But then in the next breath, these people did something to betray you or to show you that they were not to be trusted or that they really didn't have your best intentions the whole time. Maybe they actually sought out to destroy you or they were sent as a, as a, you know, demonic decoy, <laughs> like under an assignment to, to come against you, to block you, to hinder you, to distract you, to discourage you, to mock you, to blame you, all kinds of things, right? With the vibrational alignment, you have to conquer these different areas of your life. Just as, you know, Aang, if you guys watched The Last Airbender, he had to master all four elements, all four kingdoms. And toward, towards the last, the last kingdom that he had to combat was um, the fire, the fire um, kingdom, which he had the most opposition with, by the way. Um, a lot of, pro, like, antagonists. And that family and that bloodline connected to the fire kingdom. And he had to fight the, the fire lord. And he fought not with fire necessarily. Not ne necessarily with negative lower vibrational energy that was given to him. But he transmuted the energy. And it was a very key line in that last episode. And I wish I could remember it. But very powerful. If y'all have Netflix, go and watch The Last Airbender. And it's the last episode of that season, the last season that you you want to watch, okay? But, let's see. Because there's about to be an opportunity here. You guys have been getting the message about who needs to be eliminated. It's like when you play the hangman, right? You you got to eliminate certain parts. You guys ever play the hangman and... and school or whatever y'all know yeah, some of you guys might feel led to cut your hair and it could represent the clear consciousness judgment yeah judgment call Cairo's time your spiritual team is calling you to something calling you to wake up it's a limited time this is a limited, this is the final judgment, the trumpet in the in the book of Revelation, right? So that final call is clarifying the Kairos time, which again, Kairos is the opportune time, opportune window. Soul ties, page of wands. These are ties connected to your youth, to your adolescence, things that you've experienced, people that have made a marker on your life, maybe in a way that was a bit painful. So with the vibrational alignment, it's getting into your strength. And again, that strength comes from a, a silent strength, not a boastful, loud, um, aggressive type of arrogant type of energy. It doesn't come from that place. It doesn't come from that false sense of security or that false sense of independence and pushing people away either. It, it comes from a deeper strength than that. It comes from a place of compassion, honor, integrity, discipline. You know, it comes from a, a tr like a pure character, if that makes sense. And if, if again, like I'm hearing to reference the last airbender, like the avatar where he, it was a very important key. And I did a video on this and I can't believe I don't remember, but on my other channel at least my main channel i did a video on that episode i believe and it was he said something very key okay or his guide when he was in that avatar state and he recalled um he snapped into his avatar self his higher self he had that download on how to combat the force of that lower vibrational energy and how to transmute it okay and he didn't transmute the energy with negative energy or lower vibrational energy, anger. Um, it wasn't coming from that place. He was destroying 
that negative energy. I wish I could find it. It's really going to bother me. But if you feel led to look it up, you probably even find it on YouTube, actually. The Empress. Okay. So some of you guys, your trauma comes from your maternal side. Okay. Or maybe literally your mother. Okay. I know this might be heavy for some of you, but it starts with them. Okay. It could be far back from the great, great grandmas all the way up to then. Okay. Some type of, this looks like, I know it's a log, a log cut into a heart, but it looked like a piece of paper on top of that log. So it makes me think of a contract. You have the King of Pentacles of Judas. Ooh, some of you guys may feel like your father's betrayed you or your father. If you're biracial or you have a non-ethnic or non-black mother and an African descent father, there could be some discrepancy with that whole thing, okay? You feel like your father abandoned you, okay? It's something that you feel you were born into. If I make somebody cry, I'm so sorry because I feel like crying. And I feel like that is you realizing something and you're releasing it, okay? So that's you healing, but I do feel um, like I want to cry. Forgive both of your parents. Forgive them. And for some of you guys, this is your first love. And I hate to say this, for some of you, it's somebody that um, violated you at a young age. You have to make peace with that person. Not for them, but for you. For your soul's peace. So that your soul is not in pieces and fragments. You, you find that center and you're not you know, add it alone. You're not doing this by yourself. You have divine assistance. You always do. You have God. You have divine source, whatever you want to call divine creator. You have your spiritual team. Your femininity was attacked at a young age. And I had this conversation with one of my sister friends. We were just talking about this. Your femininity might have been attacked very young, okay? Seeds were planted very young. Seeds in the mind, your mindset, your beliefs. And you've been doing, in spite of what you might think, yeah, these were seeds planted. Deception. Things about men were coming from the male collective or the toxic masculine collective of things maybe this could even be media because this gives me like the gov you know if you live in the u.s or the western you'll even not even just that any parts of the world where women have been oppressed i'm getting like this like you know uh media spokespersons or things that the gov approves of to put out in the media for people to see and to consume and program people with something about that but for some of you also you resent your own father because your father could have left your father may not show up in the way that you need them even now they could be present in your life they maybe they were present via money you know they held down a job they kept a roof over your head they kept clothes on your back food on the table but that love was not there and for some of you, your mother did the best that she could okay and for some of you maybe your mother was a little bit vain if this isn't the upright energy of the empress, she was vain. She was self-centered. She was, you know, all about her, all about men. Forgive them. Took out some of that energy on you. Yeah, you're carrying that. You carry that energy. But not only that, not only that, your divine team, your divine protectors got your back. Yeah, you may have been born of these people. Your mother was the womb that the divine assigned to birth you through, but you're your own person. And your worth and your value was not determined by these things that you experienced, these, these seeds that were planted, okay? You're finding that. And I feel like sometimes in, in a 
self-love readings when i see the queen of pentacles i think of that pinnacle as her seeing her work because it's you know coins are typically shiny and you could see your reflection right or you could you know if you would imagine this being a large size pentacle i would imagine it'd be kind of like a mirror where you could see your reflection you could see your worth through that and your worth is not determined by something material if that makes sense so let's get a message i love these cards this is one of my favorite advice cards so i'm gonna pull from this feeling and virtue deck just to close it out And this isn't for you to bash or hate men. You have to transmute that energy and forgive. You know, it really goes beyond what we can see. This is really, it's, it's deeper than what we can perceive, you know. Um, and there's a lot of programming and a lot of energy to cause discord and separation. But look, you have moved boldly into your future, your golden future. And... The scripture that is on the card, it says Proverbs 3 and 5 and 6 or 3, 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and seek his will in all that you do. And he will show you which path to take. So trust in the divine that's guiding you through this because there is an opportune energy. And I feel like spirit saying like, you know, this isn't something to be overwhelmed by. Like I have to do all of this, but it's the revelation. It's the, I see it. And you break through that. You break through that glass ceiling. Okay. Take your time. And you've been called. You got the earth angels, light workers, and shadow workers, and then close for spiritual maintenance. You've been called, but take your time with yourself. And there will be a time where spirit is going to be like, okay, that door is open. Are you ready to walk through it? You got to be ready to be bold and to walk through it. Are you ready to take that those divine steps, that divine instruction? Do you trust? Do you believe? I hope that was helpful. I'm going to leave it at that, you guys. Much love. Be blessed. Be safe. Take care. Peace.